it has impacted the mental and uh, 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 physical aspect of children and adolescents. Okay, so we all know uh, all the people across the globe has been affected by it. Write in the chat box how in what way you have been affected. Write in the chat box. I want your feedback and how your children's or any children's in your relationship has been affected by right in the chat box. How the corona pandemic has impacted you. Yes, thank you, Paul G. Child couldn't start school or daycare, have been in indoors. But will G, health wise, work wise, education wise, relationship wise, means every aspect has been affected. So it doesn't interact with peer, absolutely. Write in the chat box your experience, how this corona pandemic has affected yourself and your children or children in, in your relationship. What kind of problem you're finding them? Yes, digital media has become the input system for a child. Thank you so much, Paul G, for your feedback. Mobile and TV. I want all the people to interact. Let this session be, to be interactive. What way this corona pandemic has affected? Okay, so if you can express your feeling, your thoughts, it will give outlet to it. Right in the chat box, in what way it has been affected, this corona pandemic has affected you. So thank you so much uh, for the people who has just joined. Uh, I just want to uh, re recap that Corona pandemic has affected each and every person on this globe, including children and adolescents. There has been lockdown, schools are closed, parking, uh, the, the playgrounds are closed. You're not able to go outside to meet your friends and family members. There's online classes, cancellation of ex exam, and this has impacted the psychological and physical of physical health of each and every children on this globe. So what are the impact this lockdown and Corona has on the children's health? So there has been a lot of studies all over the world and they found that because of this Corona, because of this lockdown, because of the closure of school, there is increase in the stress anxiety and feeling of helplessness in the children. children children's are becoming clinging there's increased incidence of inattention hyperactivity irritability they have become fearful about their their family members health whether they are going to get infected by corona what will happen to their parents they are feeling isolated anxious, there is increased attack, panic attack in the children and adolescents. Some are going into depression, there is a disturbed sleep. When you are go going to stay at home, it will produce a kind of a boredom. So children are having boredom, they are becoming, at they are having attention seeking behavior. There's increased incidence of nocturnal aneurysis, headache, tummy ache, nail biting, thumb sucking, lack of creativity temper tantrum, oppositional defiant disorder, they're becoming oppositional. So whatever you tell them, they will behave in an oppositional manner. If you say, don't watch TV, they will watch TV. Don't do this, they will do the same thing. So they've become oppositional. There's increased incidence of nightmare, poor appetite, agitation, restlessness, separation related anxiety, fear of family members being infected, persistently inquiring regarding COVID-19, there's increased incidence of obsessive compulsive disorder. Pe people as well as children have started increasing the hoarding of material because they think that the shops would be closed and they won't be able to get access to the goods. As far as physical health is concerned, because of watching television, mobile, lack of physical activity, increasing consumption of a lot of uh, 
packaged food, junk food, there's increased incidence of obesity, they are watching TV, they are attending the online classes. So there's increased incidence of back and visual problem. Children are missing on their routine immunization. Okay, so they are more prone for becoming, getting infected because of other uh, routine viral or bacterial infection. So how to deal with this kind of issues? Okay, so there has been a lot of studies done how to deal with this kind of issues which is being, uh, which these children are getting affected by this lockdown and corona. So first thing is you have to interact constructively about corona pandemic. You have to tell them the fact with the help of stories or pictures and according to their developmental stage, they should understand it. And it should be in a way that they should not become a fearful of it. They should become a vigilant of it. You have to tell them what is a corona, that it is a virus. It will be affect, it spreads by the air route. Okay. So if you want to protect from this virus, we have to wear mask, we have to hand wash our hand or use a sanitizer, avoid going into crowded places. So you have to teach these things in a positive, in a non-threatening, non-fearful way to the children. Okay. Second thing, these children, now when they were in school, they used to get up, they used to have breakfast and they used to go to school. After going coming back from the school, they used to go from classes, then they used to go to play outside there and they used to watch television, they used to have a dinner, they used to have homework. So the routine was fixed. But because of the lockdown and closure of school, the children are staying at home. Okay, and there is no routine. And because of that, there's so much of plenty of time and it is invested in watching television or watching mobile, watching cartoon network. So there's no routine. So you have to make sure that you have a proper routine. Okay, so you have to take <clears throat> these children and adolescents while planning the routine. Okay, you have to take their inputs. If you take their inputs, then they will feel that they are uh, their opinion matters. Okay, so have a routine that you will get up at this time, then you will have a breakfast at this time, then you will have your online class, then you will, after online class, you can play in home, you can play this game for this time, you can watch television for one and a half hour maximum in a, in a whole day, then you will have a lunch, you will have a uh, evening a breakfast and you will have a dinner at this time. So you have to have a routine plan so that child knows what to expect. So a child knows what to do and then he will do accordingly. Okay. Then you have to involve these children in a various home activity in according to their developmental age. So they can help in the cooking. They can help washing fruits, vegetables. They can help in cleanliness keeping the stuff at home in order. So you can take the help of children and you have to praise them for doing this work so that they will also feel that they're doing something constructively and they're getting uh, uh, appreciation for that as well. You have to engage them in the indoor play and creative activity. So they're watching a lot of video games so rather than letting them engaged in a video game, you can ask them to play a lot of indoor game like chess. There's so many indoor games they can uh, play at home. You have to educate them about hygiene habit and social distancing. Adolescent especially is a very vulnerable period because of a lot of physiological hormonal changes occurring in their body. So they they're having a storm in their life. And because of this, it has added fuel to the fire. So they are very confused. They don't know what to do. So let, um, they should be involved in the day-to-day -day activity. They work, uh, they, they have to be given some work responsibility. Okay. You have to let the children socialize with their friend with the help of phone or social media under adult supervision. Okay. Let them express their thoughts and feeling, how they're feeling, 
if they are under stress, let them express and discuss with their friend and the adult should monitor it. Now, what is the role of parents? The first and foremost thing is you have to provide a secure family and woman and which would be the strong protective factor for their psychological health. Okay. So there are a lot of turmoil going outside, but you have to give a secure family environment. Children are watching you, how you cope with the stress, how you cope with this corona and the way your coping strategy, you cope with this stress, it will affect your child's coping uh, mechanism. Okay, so you have to be positive, you have to be uh, vigilant, not fearful, and then they will, uh, they will see it and they will follow it. Okay, and there are different need of different children according to their <clears throat> developmental age. So young children need parents' physical presence. So you should uh, take them, hug them, okay, pat them, right? and engage more in a uh, in your day-to-day -day activity. Give them undivided positive attention and reassurance that everything would be fine. This is a challenging time, but this will go. Human has seen this kind of thing, and we have overcome. We will also overcome. So you have to give a reassurance to them. The exposure of the news to the children has to be limited because news will tell you a lot of negative things and it will be magnified and it will cause impact to the children's psychological health. So keep them away from this news, and especially the negative news. So we have discussed that the, cons the consistent routine has to be followed by the child. Then they should be given enough opportunity to play read books, rest and engage in a physical activity. Okay, So family can play board games, indoor sports, instead of video games. And there should be consistent bedtime. Because of this TV and mobile, children are keep, means, uh, keeping themselves awake till 11, 12, one o'clock. They're just watching television and all. So which is very bad for their health. So you should, have a consistent bedtime for the children. Now you should focus more on good behavior rather than bad behavior. So human psychology is like if you praise or if you give attention to something, it will recur. Okay. So if you give attention to bad things, it will keep on happening again and again. Okay. So don't do this. Don't do this. Uh, uh, don't watch a television. Don't eat this, don't watch mobile. If you say you are not doing, you're not eating properly. So if you reinforce negative thing, the children will repeat it. But if you focus on a positive things that yes, you did a exercise today, excellent. You have, you did a good painting, okay. You are learning at sing, singing, very good. You're learning dancing, very good. So whatever positive things your child is doing, reinforce them and give them the praise. If negative thing, just ignore. So tell them what to do rather than what not to do. Okay. Because if you tell them, don't do this, they will do the same thing. Okay. It is a child psychology. I would like to share one story with you. Once the father of psychiatry, Sigmund Freud went in a garden with his wife and a child. So Sigmund Freud told his wife that you play and have a fun time with our son. I have some work. I will come back evening and take care of our son. So he went back and when he came in the evening, when the garden was about to close, the mother and father were unable to find their son because this uh, uh, Sigmund Freud's wife was busy in uh, reading a book and she thought that her son was playing near her. But when Sigmund Freud came, they didn't find their son there. So they were worried because the garden was about to close and it was uh, dark. So Sigmund Freud said, this garden is very big. It is very difficult to find him. But he asked his wife, 
have you told him something not to do his wife said yes i told him not to go near fountain water fountain so sigmund freud said if your son is intelligent you will find near you will find him near mountain uh, 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 water fountain so they went there and this child was playing in the water fountain so okay so if you tell a children don't do this they will do the same thing so rather than telling them not to do something tell them what to do rather than telling them do not watch television tell them do some paper craft okay do play chess so tell them what to do rather than what not to do huh? and give them more of social praise give them star give them uh, you can give them some medals or something rather than giving some uh, bribing them that if you do this i will give this give chocolate and all rather than giving physical things give them more of uh, uh, praise and social reinforcement and if the behaviors are is not good but if it is not injurious to your child and other then just ignore it adolescent <clears throat> period is very uh, uh, stormy period which we have already discussed but the in this time the parent can be a best road model because children are at home they are watching you and they are, they will copy you so you have to also change yourself so that your children and your uh, adolescents will also change okay so teach them lot of be uh, important life uh, skill like how to cope with the stress with various stress management technique which i am going to discuss then how to cope with the emotions like fear anxiety depression hopelessness and teach them how to solve the problems which life put in front of us okay due to cancellation of enzyme uh, due to cancellation of exams adolescents are in stress anxiety and depression they are worried about their future what will ha happen to their future so you have to handle this situ situation in a very positive manner you have to reassure them that this will pass this is a matter of few months and everything will be normal okay and include adolescent in a decision making process let them know that their say also matters now communication with adolescent is very difficult so it has to be open and non directive you should not direct them what to do okay so have a open and non directive communication which we are going to discuss subsequently don't pass judgment don't pass judgment that you are bad you are not good at in math you are not good in science you are not uh, exercising you are watching many uh, television for hours together okay don't pass judgment okay you can tell them that your behavior is bad you are good but your behavior is bad dissociate behavior from the the person hmm? and you have to give them certain responsibility for the uh, home home uh, household chores and get them involved into the household chores now adolescents are watching this television and they are watching the things which they should not watch so you are to keep a watch what they are watching on the television or they are watching on the internet okay and they should be encouraged to involved in a non gadget non television related activity now what is the role of a school teacher now there are lot of online classes this is the only mechanism with which the education is imparted so the children the teacher has a big role to spread awareness about corona awareness about the preventive measures then they can teach children basic exercise basic pranayam yoga meditation they can make the online session very uh, attractive by having quizzes puzzles competition okay because every day there is a online classes it has become monotonous so add some new flavors and color by quizzes puzzles and competition now how to communicate with the children and teenagers okay so there are various way 
in which you can positively communicate with these children. And this is the acronym is a face fear. Okay. So face means you have to communicate face to face. When you're talking to your child, talk that in a such a way that you have face to face, eye to eye contact. Okay. Next thing is you have to listen attentively and actively. The child should know that whatever they are seeing, our parents are listening and they're listening attentively. Then you have to keep your head calm because you're talking to your child because he has done something wrong. You want to fire him, you have to beat him, but keep yourself, your head calm. Then put a fact in front of the child. So first is this non-verbal way, face-to-face -face attention, active listening and calm. Now you have to put a verbal communication. So you have to put a fact. So fact means what you're worried about your child. You can tell that you're not eating properly since last seven days. So this is a fact. And then next is explain. You have to explain that initially used to eat a lot of green leafy vegetable fruits, a lot of homemade food, but since last seven days, you're not eating properly, you're eating a lot of junk food. So you're telling them the fact as well as you're explaining why you're worried about the things you are worried, okay? Then afterward, you have to tell them that what action plan we should have to solve this issue. And then you have to review it every weekly. So this way you have to communicate with your children, okay? So write in the chat box, box yes. Everybody got it? How to communicate with the children? Face fear, face to face, attention. Then you have to keep your head calm. Then you have to tell them the fact, then explain why you're worried about this behavior, have an action plan and review it. So if everybody are, everybody got, the way to communicate with children, write in the chat box, yes. How to communicate so that we can go ahead. Thank you so much, Javad ji. Yes. All of you are with me, right? Yes, in the chat box. You got the way to communicate with the children. Let this session be interactive, right in the chat box so that we can go ahead. Javaji says, I think people don't know much about chat option here. Okay, so there's a chat option. You can put your comments in the chat box. Thank you, Batulji. Yes, right in the chat box. You understood how to communicate with the children. Okay, so you can use this template to communicate with the children. Thank you so much for the feedback. Next, while communicating, you have to praise your child. Okay. They, everybody, including adult, become happy when they are praised. If you are in office, your boss prays, then you become motivated to do more work and repeat the same thing. Okay. And give your heart and soul to it. Same way children also are hungry and thirsty for praise. Sure, a lot of praise, okay? It is without any money, okay? And easily available. So praise your child. Say positive things about your child. You're very good, you're intelligent, you're very smart, okay? You are, you dance very well, you sing very well, your painting is excellent. So you, say positive things about your child and whatever positive things you will say about your child, he will try to repeat it. 
love your child so love means l is listen to your child o means overlook minor mistake v means have a positive vibration e means encourage so love your child tell them don't worry i am with you everything will be fine and this too shall pass so this way you should communicate with their child now children children are uh not able to sometimes not able to express the emotion to you what the the emotion turmoil they are undergoing so you have to equip them how to communicate their emotion to you with the help of this traffic light signal so you have to have, give them the card uh, green card yellow card red card and you have to tell them that if you are feeling happy show me green card if you are feeling upset nervous show me yellow card and if you are feeling very depressed you want to uh, beat or hit somebody you are very angry then show the red cards okay so let them give the opportunity to communicate their emotions with various technique by this card then you can give them the emojis if you are happy show me this emoji if you are low show me this emoji and if you are very low or very aggressive or very depressed show this emoji so let them communicate with the help of this kind of chart uh, uh, cards also ask your child to write in a diary about their emotions their problems what they are thinking okay it will act as a psychological purging me mechanism okay so on a lighter note once the friend of sigmund freud asked sigmund freud during counseling a lot of people come to you they share their emotional things okay they share so much of personal things it doesn't affect you you don't get mad listening to this sigmund freud said yes people come to me they share their emotion to me till this time it is right but who told you that i listen to it okay so it is on a lighter note so if you express your feeling by telling some to somebody else or writing in a diary it gives outlet to your emotions and you become light so teach your child to write that i am feeling angry i am feeling uh, very low i am feeling anxious let them write it down why they are feeling anxious write they teach them how to write it in a diary and this habit will change their future life okay then ask them to write their emotions with the help of painting children are very intelligent to write their emotions this this painting is uh, taken from the movie tare zameen ke uh, tare zameen pe where the child has a learning disability and he has depicted his emotions to the this picture how this is away from the family okay so let them communicate and express their emotions children's emotion by painting now how to discipline child now there are four types of parenting one is a passive parenting okay passive means child is doing and you are not giving any attention what the child is doing second is submissive means whatever child is demanding your fulfilling okay so you are fulfilling each and every crazy demand of your child this is a submissive parenting this is also bad passive parenting is also bad third is a dictatorial parenting like authoritarian okay so do what i say and you are not taking the emotions and the say of your child into consideration and you are doing in a dictator way this is also bad it will create a kind of resistance against you it will create a fear and anger against you and they will not listen to you and the fourth type of parenting is called as assertive parenting means you are taking care of the freedom of your child into consideration okay you are letting your child to do what you want to do but you are setting a limit for example you can go to play outside but come back by 6 o'clock okay you can watch television but you have to watch this this for this this time okay you can watch mobile but for this time you know watch this content so you are allowing your child to do what he want but you are setting a limit 
you're setting a certain Lakshman ratio and you have to be very assertive not to breach that Lakshman ratio or that boundary. So this assertive type of parenting is the best type of parenting to discipline your child. So write in the chat box, which type of parenting you like to do? Is it a passive, is it a submissive or it is a dictatorship or assertive parenting? Which is the best parenting? Write in the chat box. Let this session be, be the interactive session. Which type of parenting is the best parenting? Yes, assertive type of parenting is the best type of parenting. Right in the chat box. Assertive means you are taking the independence of your child into consideration. He says into consideration, but you are setting certain limit. Thank you so much for the feedback. So assertive type of parenting is helpful for discipline. Now media literacy. Now everybody knows the children are exposed to the television mobile because of this lockdown. Now what happens? Whatever stuff which is shown on the television is quite different than our actual life. In the television, everything happened very fast. The child become adolescent within a few minutes, adult within a few minutes, you get job, you marry a girl, he has children, so everything happened very fast. And on contrary, our life is very slow. Okay, so child think that, hey, whatever happening is not happening in my life. My life is very bored. Okay, so it creates a kind of a tension in a child. It creates a kind of a boredom. It creates a kind of a, means instant gratification things in the children. Because there is a discordance between what happens on television and what happens in your life, okay? The second thing, initially in our old days, there was, there was only Durdarshan. We used to have a Chitra during Wednesday and movie on Saturday or Sunday. So we used to wait for that. But nowadays, everywhere, thousands of movies are running in all the channels. If you don't like, then you have to change your, uh, just the button of your control and just remote control and change your channel. So children are not able to wait. They want instant gratification. And that's why they have become inattentive. They have become, their attention span has reduced because they don't want to wait and they want instant gratification. So they have become very hyperactive because of this media. Third thing, media, the, the things which are shown in media is only to promote the company's product. So they will show advertisement in a very fascinating manner and they will target the children. Okay. And then the children will just throw a tantrum for that particular st stuff which they have seen in that particular advertisement. Just, I want this, I want this. Okay. So because of that, it has added a lot of financial burden on the parents because children become adamant that I want these things because that child in that particular serial has that particular toy. So children are becoming adamant. They want everything, whatever they're seeing. They're seeing a lot of advertisement of packaged food, junk food on the television. They want the junk food. And because of that, the obesity is increasing. And while watching television, you keep on eating and you don't know what you are eating. It is also causes increase in the obesity in the children. A okay. lot of violence has been shown in the televisions and children's, it goes in their subconscious mind and they want to emulate it. So aggressiveness in the children's are increasing. Lot of things which children's are not supposed to see are exposed on the television. And also children want to emulate it and it affects their psychological health. So this way, the media is indirectly affecting, subconsciously affecting the children. So initially the parent used to 
condition the child, the parents, teachers, relative, friends is to condition the child. But now the media has become an important source to condition the subconscious mind of the child. And it is happening in a negative way. So you have to become media literate yourself and you have to teach media literacy to your child. So what is media literacy? First, you should formulate a household policy that what media, all the people in the home are going to watch on television, what time, how many hours per day. It is recommended that you should not watch television more than one and a half hour per day. And you have to follow. And if you set an example, then the child will follow the same thing. Okay. Second thing, while watching television, you have to teach them what happening in that particular advertisement or serial. If in the advertisement, it is shown that they drink some cold drink, then they jump from the building, top of the building. And the hero just land on the earth safely. Okay. So you have to tell the children that this is absolutely false. This cold drink doesn't contain any energy. It is only a salt and sugar containing it has a very bad effect on your health and if you try to jump from the building you will broke your bones you will land up in the hospital so you have to tease them what is the truth behind the things which they are seeing and when they become a media literate so whenever they are watching television they will take what is there and they will forget about what is uh, not to be taken so you have to tease the this media literacy to your child and have a policy, what channel and how many hours it should be watched. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, I will uh, ask and request parent not to give mobile phone to their child because not only they, at least in TV, the content are regulated, but in uh, mobile, the content, they can access any website. Okay. They can access video games where it is found that they have been there's a lot of financial fraud they have been bullied and they have been exploited also so you have to keep a watch what channel they are watching what stuff they are surfing on the internet and prevent them the access of mobile that is the important thing because the WHA says that prolonged exposure to the mo uh, mobile radiation may lead to uh, brain cancer. Okay, so it's a warning by WHO. So if your child is exposed to mobile radiation right to the childhood where their brain is evolving, their cells are dividing. So you can imagine the health hazard posed by the mobile radiation. So I would request all of you to keep your children away from the mobile. It is better to not to watch uh, any media but between the mobile and television, I would recommend television rather than mobile. Okay. And again, television only one and a half hour. Now you have to delay in meeting the demand of your children. So I would like to share one experiment which was done in, I think, Australia. It is called as marshmallow experiment. So what they did, they took children, they put in one room. Okay, so they had a plate in front of them. So they, the researcher put a marshmallow, it's kind of a sweet in this plate. And they told the children, if you eat, it's okay. But if you wait till we come back after half an hour, and if you don't eat this marshmallow till that time, you will be given one more marshmallow. Okay, so they put a marshmallow in front of them and they went away, but they were watching what these children are doing. So some children were watching this marshmallow. Okay, they were doing some funny things. They were trying to control it. Okay, some children ate it and a lot of children ate this marshmallow. But few children didn't eat. And when the researcher came back after half an hour, those children who didn't eat the marshmallow, they were given two marshmallow. Now it was a very simple experiment, but it had a very great ramification because they followed these children in their adolescent, their adult life. And what they found, those children who didn't eat the marshmallow, they were good at study. 
they passed with a flying color they got a good university they got a good job their family life was good and those children who ate the marshmallow immediately they were very poor in study they didn't got admission in colleges they their professional life was in shamble their personal family life was in a shamble and there were a lot of police cases against them so what this experiment tells so if you delay the gratification then this is comes with the will then you have a your child has a great chance to excel in his personal professional life okay so nowadays what happens the parents are like a servant to the child whatever child demands it is immediately fulfilled okay so what so child knows that if i demands my demands are fulfilled and if they get an answer as a no then they will throw a tantrum because they know ki my demand has to be accepted because you are fulfilling it okay but when they go to college when they go to their adult life and when they come across no they come across uh, failure then they will not able to deal with that failure then they will go into depression they will commit a suicide and all kind of things because everything has been fulfilled during their childhood they have not heard a no and when they heard a no they get a problem which is a common once they enter in a college and adult life they are not able to handle these things so you have to you should not meet the demand of your child immediately okay so you have to tell them that if you want this stuff you have to earn a star if you do certain homework help me in the home stuff i will give one star if you learn singing i will give one star if you run dancing i will give one star if you watch television excessively your star would be detected and if you accumulate say 20 star then your demand would be fulfilled so you are fulfilling the demand you are delaying the demand and you are making your child earn that whatever stuff he wants so this way you can fulfill the demand in a constructive way okay now how to deal with the temper tantrum now this is very common in toddlers they will say i want this and if their demand are not filled then they will throw tantrum they will uh, uh they will hit you or they will lie on the ground they will cry they will break the object in your home okay when you go in the mall they will say i want this chocolate i want this toy if their demand is not filled they will lie in the ground and they will start crying and it will they will create a scene because they know they are emotionally blackmailing you because they know when you go to public if i cry then your ego would be hurt and you will immediately fulfill the demand and this vicious cycle will continue so how to deal with this temper tantrum so to deal with this temper tantrum you have to follow this abc so what is the antecedent which lead to this tantrum b is behavior what happens during tantrum and see the consequences what happens if the child throw the tantrum usually when the child throw the tantrum his or her demands are met so the child knows that if i do this thing my demand would be fulfilled and it will be it's like a vicious cycle it will occur again and again so to break it you have to know why your child is doing this thing antecedent okay then what is it consequences means if you are fulfilling the fulfilling the demand then this will re, uh, this behavior will recur so how to deal with it so i'll you i will give an example a mother mary is going with her son jack in the mall now the jack says sees a toy and says mother i want that toy mother says no then the jack start creating a scene the jack throw the tantrum he cries he lie on the ground he thrash his limb all the people are watching it okay so what mother do so mother gives the toys so this is absolutely 
not recommended the what is recommended the jack is throwing tantrum what mother should do mother should pick up the child and change the scene take the child and take the child out of the mall okay take the child in the garden let the child cry okay when the child will exhaust then take the child to your home okay so while taking to the home now jack will say mama i want a cookie when you reach the home i want a cookie then the mother will say jack no cookie today but jack will say mama i want a cookie i like it you usually give me every day but mother will say jack whatever you did in a mall was unacceptable so no cookie today then jack will cry but mother will say jack today no cookie then after some time jack will say i want to watch movie, uh, television the mother say, will say no television today whatever behavior you did in a mall was unacceptable you hurt me no television today okay so you will not punish the child but you will deprive the child what the child want okay and you will take the child away from that particular situation and take the change the situation if you are in the mall take outside in the garden and don't fulfill the demand and when child come become a normally normal then you have to tell them that you are very good but your behavior was very bad and if you do this thing your demand won't be made but if you request i will consider to meet your demand so you have to explain what is bad when the child is normal and you have to explain what is a normal positive way and acceptable way to ask any to put forward any demand so if you have if you follow this uh, steps then the temper tantrum would be reduced and it will go away because child will know that if i do these things my demand are not made and i don't get what i like then it, he will stop doing this uh, throwing the temper tantrum and all the people should have this discipline what happens if mother don't fulfill the demand then he will go to father if father don't fulfill demands he will go to grandparents and grandparent will fulfill and this will continue so all the people should be on board when to deal with the discipline okay and at no cost there should be any corporal punishment if you hit the child physical punishment it will produce an anger and resentment and he will not listen to you okay the next thing to keep your child mentally and physically fit is physical exercise okay now the children have no access to the playground they are not playing with their friends so they are living in the home and they are watching television increase in the obes in the incidence of obesity in the research it is found that those children who do physical exercise the size of the hippocampus increase the hippocampus deal with the memory so if you want to increase the memory for your child let him have exercise at home and you do your exercise and teach him what exercise he can do at home so you also become physically fit and he will also become physically fit lots of stress hormone accumulates in our body okay and if you do physical exercise it will give outlet to it on a lighter note once there was a employee named mullah nasruddin his boss uh, his boss was a very atrocious boss he used to fire mullah nasruddin that you are useless i am going to fire you you are not punctual you don't meet the deadline of your uh, whatever task are given to you i am going to terminate you so mullah nasruddin become very angry he has urged to hit the boss with his shoes but because of the job he controls it but as the atrocity of boss increases perpetually his urge to hit the boss with his shoes increases he becomes so disturbed that he stop going for the job he remain in a home the worried parent took mullah nasruddin to the psychiatrist after going through the history the psychiatrist uh, says the treatment is very simple have a big portrait of your boss at your home and hit that photos with your shoes five time going before your office and five times after coming back from your office 
Okay. So Mullah Nasruddin said, how it is going to help? You, the doctor said, you just try. So Mullah Nasruddin follow the instruction of doctor. And after some days, his anger toward boss reduces. His work efficiency increases. Okay. So after one month, boss called Mullah Nasruddin in his cabin and said, Mullah Nasruddin, you are doing a fantastic job. Okay, you are the employee of the month. I'm going to give you promotions. But before that, tell me, tell me the secret of your increase in the work performance. Mullah Nasruddin said, boss, please don't ask the secret. Okay, so what Mullah Nasruddin did, he gave outlet to his anger in the form of hitting the photo of the boss with his shoes. But you can give outlet to your anger by doing physical exercise because during anger, during stress, during anxiety, a lot of hormone like adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol accumulate in the body. And if they stay in a body, it has a bad effect on a body and you have to give outlet to it. So you can give outlet to these kind of hormones by doing physical exercise. So it is recommended that you have to do 30 minutes physical exercise every day, at least five uh, days per week. Okay. Next is healthy diet. Diet is very essential for the mental and psychological health. Nowadays, children are eating a lot of junk foods, which is having a bad effect on their health, increasing the incidence of obesity. My wife, who, who is a pediatric cardiologist, she did a study in, in the school children. And she found that the incidence of hypertension in the school going children is around 6%. The incidence of obesity is almost 20, 30% in the uh, urban area. So because of this junk food, because of lack of activity, the incidence of this obesity is increasing and this lockdown has added fuel to the fire. So what food your child should eat? Your child should eat homemade, freshly prepared, is mainly the vegetarian diet. Okay, so you should, the child should eat, or you, sh including you should eat cereal, pulses, vegetable, fruits, nuts, roots. Okay, so all the natural foods, which is prepared at home, okay, and which is unprocessed, you have to eat that food. You, you should avoid sugar, you should avoid junk food. Now, what happens the junk food, the packaged food? Do you know if you prepare a food in the morning, it will rot by evening? Okay, so the shelf life of the homemade food is few hours. But you can see the shelf life of food which is available in the mall is many months. So how they do, how they increase the shelf life. So they will remove the nutrients from the food. They will add a lot of chemicals. They would add preservative to increase the shelf life. To make it more palatable, they will add a lot of salt. They will add a lot of sugar. And to make it very good to see, they would add coloring agent. So these chemicals are extremely bad for your health. And they will package in the plastic, which is also carcinogenic. So this packaged food, the junk food should be avoided and the unprocessed homemade food should be given to the children. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Magna Chawla, welcome. Uh, certainly obesity is another pandemic we are dealing with. Sugar tax should be implemented. Processed food and preservative are causing endocrine disruption. Thank you so much, Dr. Magna Chawla for the feedback. Dr. Magna Chawla is a pediatric endocrinologist. So she is coming across this kind of obesity in a clinic and she has shared the sheer explosion of obesity pandemic all over the, means it is said that there are more obese children than the malnourished children. Okay, so obesity is a epidemic all over the world. So sugar is extremely bad. I will call a sugar a most dangerous poison on earth. Okay, because we tend to eat a lot of sugars when we are happy. We celebrate, we eat a lot of sugar. Okay, and it is subsidized by government. It is easily available. And all the root causes of diseases, including obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, lies in sugar. Okay, if you want, 
to make yourself healthy, your child healthy, reduce the intake of sugar, okay? And reduce the intake of processed food. And almost your 80% problem would be uh, solved. The next tip is a good sleep. Nowadays, because of lockdown, children are watching television. They are remaining awake till 12 o'clock, one o'clock, which is bad for real. Because in sleep, whatever wear and tear occur during whole day, our body has a healing mechanism activated during sleep, digestion occur during sleep. The melatonin hormone is secreted during sleep. Growth hormone is secreted during sleep. A lot of digestion and healing process occur during sleep. Our memory is consolidated during sleep. Our fat is burned in sleeps. Okay, so, so many things occur during sleep. So sleep is not a useless stuff. Okay, so for adult have a uninterrupted seven and a half hour to eight hour of sleep. And for children, depending upon their age, they should have nine to 10 hour of uninterrupted sleep during night. Now creative transformation of energy. If I give you an example, if I put a cow dung in outside your home, what will happen? It will emanate a bad odor and nobody will enter you know, your home. But if I put this cow dung in a garden as a fertilizer to the tree, what will happen? The tree will have flowers and the flower will emanate fragrance. Okay, so what we have done, we have creatively transformed the odor of cow dung to the fragrance of the flower. Similarly, the children has a lot of energy, but if you don't give them the proper direction, they will waste by being hyperactive. They will be a nuisance. They will waste this energy in watching television. But if you creatively transform this energy for developing a various hobbies, like singing, like dancing, like painting, like gardening, like any paper craft, okay? So if you tell them that if do this skill, rather than watching television, you would be creatively transforming their energy and you are having a holistic development of your child, okay? So you utilize the energy, let the energy vest in dancing, playing, playing the games, the physical games, singing, painting, and gardening. So there would be overall development of the child. Music therapy. We all know that the calm music soothes our mind. If we're anxious, stressed, if we listen to the soft music, we, our mind become cool. So these the children, whenever they're angry, they're stressed, anxious, to listen to the soft music, have a soft music on a background, it will soothe the children's mind. Their hyperactivity will reduce. Prayer. So this is an important time. All the members are in home. Parents are having work from home. Children are there. So have a prayer time where it will give an opportunity all the people to come together. Okay. Then you can pray together. It will spread a positive vibration when you pray together. So have a routine prayer, teach your a, a child to pray the God, thank the God for whatever the God has given, okay? So have the attitude of gratitude ingrained in your child. During prayer, you should not ask your child to ask something from God, but express the gratitude that God has given so much of thing for us. God is protected, God has given the help and express our gratitude during that prayer. So the prayer has to be together with all the family member to spread a positive vibration. You have to teach your child to do yoga, basic yoga, Surya Namaskar. You do it, you teach your child and it will completely transform his life. Pranayama, till them teach your child a basic pranayama. Pranayana, pranayama means Prana means your breath, yama means control. So there are so many complicated pranayama, but you can teach them a simple deep breathing technique, a diaphragmatic breathing technique. Means you have to inhale in a such a way that your abdomen comes out, your chest is expanded. You count for, from one to four, 
and then excel counting from 4 to 1 okay so i'll demonstrate like you have to teach them to inhale like this inhale excel so this simple diaphragmatic breathing counting from 1 to 4 during inhalation and then reverse from 4 to 1 in exhalation will go a long way to help to increase the vital capacity of your child and also increase the vital capacity of you because we all know that during corona pandemic the most common organ which is affected is your lung and there is a decrease in oxygen saturation so if you increase your lung capacity by doing pranayama you will not get infected by corona or if you get infected your saturation may not fall below the normal level because you have exercised your lung meditation you have to teach your child the meditation there's so many types of meditation but what i teach is a mindful meditation if you want to know how to do mindful meditation there's video on my uh, youtube channel you can go and access it but uh, for the time being, I'll put it in a simplified way that during mindful meditation, you have to just close your eye and you have to just observe your breathing at a nostril, air coming in and air going out, air coming in and air going out. Okay. And whenever thoughts come in your mind, you have to bring back your attention at the nostril. Okay? So this is a mindful meditation. Mindfulness is living in a present moment, accepting the things as it is in a non-judgmental way forgetting about your past and not worrying about your future. So you have to teach your child to live in a present moment. Okay. So while doing mindful meditation and this has to be employed in each and every aspect of your life. If he is studying, you have to do the study in a mindful way. If he is playing, he has to do playing in a mindful way. He has to be there hundred percent in the present moment. So his play can become mindful meditation. His eating can become mindful meditation. So you do it, you teach your child and Practice this mindful meditation and just employ it in each and every aspect of your life. Next thing is a balanced parenting. Now, parenting is like a walk, walking on this rope. Okay, you have to balance, you have to go left, you have to go right, and it is a tight rope. Okay, so I'd like to share a story of a Gautam Buddha, which I always like. Once a prince went to Gautam Buddha and he said, I want to become your disciple. But the other disciple of Gautam Buddha said, he is a prince. He will not follow the rules of the disciple. But Buddha admit in his ashram. But what this prince does, he stopped eating. When other people are watching, uh, walking on a road, he used to walk on a thorn. So after a few days, his health deteriorated. He was on a verge of dying. When Gautam Buddha came to know, then he went to meet this disciple and he asked him, when you were prince, you used to play a guitar. Tell me when the string, the wire of guitar are too tight, will it produce music? The prince said, no. Gautam Buddha asked him, if the wire of guitar are loose, whether it will produce music. The prince said no. Then Gautam Buddha asked him, when it will produce a melodious music? The prince said, when the wires, the strings are not too tight and not too loose. Okay. So Lord Buddha told him, the life is like, like that. People always goes from one extreme to other. You will eat a lot of things and when you become guilty, then you will stop eating. Okay. So our mind goes from one extreme to other, but Buddha, Buddha, Gautam Buddha has given a middle path. Okay. So middle path has to be followed in each and every aspect of your life, be eating, be watching television or parenting. So what is this middle path? Middle path means you should not neglect your child. This is one extreme. And second thing, you should not give constant attention and constant helping to your child. It has to be in between. 
it, there should not be neglect, no neglect and there should not be excessive attention. What happened? Parents has become over attentive and over protective of their child. And this has led to the various problem when they face the problem later on in their life. Whatever problem faced by the child, the, the, the parents will come and they help it out. And on behalf of the child, they will solve the problem. Okay. So I'd like to share one story with you. One, a rich couple went to a hotel and they asked the manager to send four uh, uh, waiters and four servants to pick her adolescent child. When the, uh, the servant of the hotel picked the child, they said, this child is so beautiful. But unfortunately, this child couldn't walk. It is so unfortunate thing. Listening to this mother said, what are you uh, telling me? My child can walk, but I am rich. He is not supposed to walk. Okay. So we help the child in a such a way that we make our child weak. We do not allow him to face the challenge of, challenges of the life. During a time of walking, when the child is one year old, he will fall down. If you think that if child fall, it will hurt the child and then you will prevent your child from walking, then he will not able to walk. Okay. So the child will fall again. It will rise. It will fall. You will rise. You have to help the child when he's getting up, but let the child fall. You cannot prevent child not falling. Otherwise he will not walk. So give attention, but moderate attention. Don't neglect, don't give excessive attention. Second thing, if you teach your child science, teach him spirituality as well. Okay. Tree has a, its a power in a root. Okay. See so the outer expansion of tree depends upon the quality of root. If it, the, the tree has a strong root, the outer aspect would be strong and it can resist any cyclone and any turmoil because the roots are strong. Similarly, your child and your root lies inside your heart, your Atma. You have to strengthen your child's and your self, heart and Atma. And this is done by doing meditation, by following spirituality. So you have to strengthen the root of your child by teaching the spirituality. You have to teach him science, but teach him spirituality. Teach him maths, but teach him love. Teach him how to win, but teach him to lose. Because in relationship, if you lose, then it will have a long lasting relation. Because Saint Kabir has said, Premana Badi Upije, Premana Hatabikai, Raja Praja Joy Ruche, Shishile Dejai. What does it mean? You cannot get love in the field, or you cannot buy from shop. Even if you're king or you're commoner, if you want love, there's only way you will get love by giving away your head. Head means your ego. Okay. So when you lose your ego, you lose your me, you lose your, yourself in relationship, then you have a long lasting and healthy relationship. So teach him to win, but teach him how to lose. So this is called as a balancing parenting. So the child mind is like a fertile soil. Okay. Saint Kabir has said, Karta thato kyura abakari kyu pashtai boy ped babul ka amwa ka se pai. The Kabir said, why you are now repenting for the, being, for the things that you have sown a seed of babul and now you are expecting a fruit of a mango. Okay. What you will sow in the soil, you will get whatever you sow in the soil. Okay. So child minds is like a fertile soil. What you put, you know, your mind, uh, mind of a child, the child will become, it will, the child will grasp it and it will become the way you have conditioned your child. In the research, it is found that the parent tell children 1.50 lakhs, 1 lakh 50,000 negative things about them by 18 years and only 1,000 positive words about the child by 18 years. 
But this is research, okay? You are useless. You're poor in math. You won't be anything. You are loser. Okay, so parent will tell, teacher will tell, the relative will tell. And you are slow. You are dumb. You will become a servant. You won't get any job. So these negative things are imbibed on the child's mind. And the, the child mind, subconscious mind, absorb it. The child's mind is like a soil. It's like a sponge. It absorbs everything you throw at the child. And it will become the child's self-image. You will tell that you are dumb. Then your child will have a self-image that the child, I am a dumb. I am poor in math. I am poor in science. I am I am failure. Okay. So this, <coughs> excuse me, whatever negative thing you will tell about your child, your child will have its self-image and will he become adult. He will behave in the same way. Okay. I would like to share one story with you. Everybody know Albert Einstein. One day, the Albert Einstein bring a letter from the his teacher and hand over to the mother. And Albert Einstein asked mother what the teacher has written in the letter. Then mother opened the letter and says, the teacher has written that you are very intelligent. You are such an intelligent child that there is no teacher in our school who can teach my child. So our teacher is incapable of teaching you are intelligent child. So find some other school for your child. So Albert Einstein become very happy. When Albert Einstein grows, means he become an adult and he, during shifting of his home, he find that letter and he read it. The tear rolled down from the Albert Einstein's eyes. What was written on it? It was written that same letter when the Albert Einstein was a small. It was written that your child is a dumb, is useless. The teacher can't teach your child. Take the child away from our school. Okay, so these bad things were written, but when mother read that letter to Albert Einstein, she said, Ki, you are very intelligent. Teachers are incapable of teaching you because you are so intelligent. And Albert Einstein had an image that I am very intelligent. Okay. So the mother created this kind of image, even if the negative things was written in the letter. So if you will say good thing about your child, even if he is slow, then let him be slow. Don't compare him with other people. Compare him with himself. Okay. Teach him Kaizen, daily continuous improvement. Teach him be a better person today as compared to the yesterday. Okay. So don't compare, don't criticize, don't have a competition among other people. Compete with himself. Be a better person today as compared to the yesterday and accept your child. You tell that your behavior is bad, but I love you. I love you, but whatever you did today was wrong. We label the child that you are a bad boy. Rather than saying you are a bad boy, your behavior was bad, but you are a good boy. If you dissociate your behavior from the child, then your child will listen. Okay. If you, your child tell you something that he has done wrong, you listen carefully, give him positive support and encourage him. Even if he has done wrong, but he has shared the things with you. And then whenever he will do anything wrong in future, he will come and share to you. But if he has done something wrong, that he has bunk school, he came and he will tell you that I have bunk school and went to watch a movie. Then if you beat him, if you say you, you are useless, I'm working so hard and you are uh, not going to uh, going school and uh, spending all the money watching a movie, then next time if you do something wrong, he will not tell you. Okay, he will tell to his friend. That's why there is a peer acceptance. That's why the children listen to their friend rather than their parents. Because their parents do not accept them. They do not accept their negativity. They do not accept their shortcoming. While the friend accepted. So that's why there is a peer pressure. 
that's why the the children's and adolescents listen to the uh, their uh, friends rather than uh, because you have not accepted uh, them okay next thing is a role model everything which i have explained would be useless if you do not behave the way you are you want your child to behave okay so you have to act as a role model if you want your child to exercise you have to exercise if you want your child to eat healthy food you have to eat healthy food if you want your child to sleep at proper time you have to sleep at a proper time if you want your child not to watch mobile you should not watch a mobile so you have to act as a role model to your child because your child is watching you they are not listening to you what you are saying but they are watching you and they are following you not what they say because they know what you are and what you are saying okay so you have to change yourself to bring a positive change in your your uh, child's life and you have to be optimistic because we all know because of corona pandemic has brought stress anxiety and hopelessness all over the world including adult and children all have become hopeless anxious but we have to have a hope and when we have a hope we have a role model and child will have hope and we have to give hope to your child that this shall these two shall pass there would be light at the end of the tunnel there would be always silver lining okay so i'd like to share a story to end the talk the there was a group of frog they were traveling unfortunately three frogs fall in a deep pit they were jumping and trying to come out of the pit okay but other frogs were say were saying and shouting this pit is too deep it is impossible for you to come out of the pit listening to this one frog stop trying and he dies the second frog after a few attempt stop trying and the second frog also dies but the third frog keep on jumping keep on jumping till that time the other frogs went away but this frog keep jumping jumping and jumping and after several attempt the frogs come out of the pit and when this frog went and meet other frogs the other frogs were very astonished to see this frog alive they said we told you we told you that the pit is too deep it is impossible for you to come out of the pit but how did you come out of the pit the this frog said i can't hear with this he said i can't hear as this frog was deaf he didn't listen to the negative stuff told by the other frog and he kept on trying so my dear friend during this corona pandemic if you go to social media television there would be a doomsday everybody will say there is end there is death corona unemployment war everywhere and you will feel that this is the end of the world no this is not the end of the world you have to have a deep fear to this kind of a negativity we have to keep trying we have to keep ourselves mentally and physically fit to teach your child how to remain mentally and physically fit and we will able to navigate this challenging time so dear friends to summarize corona 19 uh, covid 19 pandemic and lockdown has caused various mental and psychological problem in children adolescents and adults to deal with this kind of issue we have to give your child a safe family environment you have to communicate with your child about current pandemic you have to set a daily routine for your child so that he know what to follow you have to get your child involved in the various household activity teach your child about hygiene habits and social distancing encourage child to play indoor sports and activities stay in touch with the friends and relatives to the media have a assertive type of parenting delay in meeting the demand of your child let him earn whatever he wants deal with your child with the temp uh, deal with your child so temper tantrum with uh, assertive parenting and abc at any cost no corporal uh, no corporal punishment encourage your child to do physical exercise eat healthy homemade unprocessed food no sugar no 
junk food have a proper sleep time how uninterrupted sleep for your child creatively transform the energy of your child by letting them engage in a hobbies like dancing singing gardening painting let your child listen to the soft music when they are stressed anxious pray and express gratitude to the god do yoga teach your child yoga do pranayam meditation and teach your child the pranayam and meditation have a balancing parenting means teach your child science but as well as spirituality teach your child the maths as well as love teach your child to win as well as to lose okay have a role model change yourself to bring change in your uh, uh, in your uh, uh, children's life have a optimistic outlook so that child will also have a optimistic outlook to your life i thank all of you from bottom of my heart for being here now this session is open for question and answer thank you so much for being here now i would like all of you to share your feedback how did you find this workshop and i'd like to put whatever questions you have so that i can answer it thank you so much thank you so much javed ji thank you very much very helpful and informative thank you so much for the feedback write the feedback how did you find this session if you have any questions you can put in the question and chat box question and answer session uh, section as well till you write your questions and answer and your feedback i would like to share about my community write your questions in the chat box so dear friends i have started this global holistic health initiative and health and happiness community so there are a lot of members in my community and the code of honor which i follow in my community is holistic health the member in my community i try to attain holistic health in each and every sphere of their life maybe personal social professional spiritual and they guide their friends and family to attend the same the member try to follow mindfulness and awareness in each and every aspect of their life they live in a present moment accept the life in a non judgmental way they try to change the things they can change and accept the things they cannot change the member try to protect the environment by saving water maintaining cleanliness avoiding pollution of environment in whatever way possible the member are strive to become a leader because they know that the change starts with me not they do not try to change other people but they change they try to change themselves and set an example they are torch bearer to the society the next principle is a kaizen the members strive for a continuous daily improvement they learn it they implement it and they teach other people they are in competition with themselves not with other because they try to become a better person today as compared to the yesterday and they believe in action taking and they contribute to society you know whatever pos uh, possible way maybe monetary by sharing their knowledge time and skill so why i started this community because five years back my health was in a bad shape i was completely stressed and burned out i had put on 10 kg of weight and i was looking much older than my chronological age then i stopped i introspected i read hundreds of book on self help holistic health spiritual book i formulated certain principle and i implemented it and it completely transformed my life i lost 10 kg of weight my work efficiency improved my relationship with my parents spouse increased and improved so i started teaching people this principle and i'm on a mission to inspire 2 million people to achieve holistic health so i'm conducting a lot of live workshop seminars on holistic health for various corporation for various organization for various colleges 
okay on radio i published a book o oh stress give me a beck which has become an international number one best seller recently i published a book 17 powerful secret to manage stress during corona pandemic so my journey was like this i was do- working and i fall this in this valley then i learned by reading lot of book i came out of this valley but it took lot of time so i want to teach whatever wisdom i have accumulated so that those who are in this valley or about to fall in this valley should not fall or come out of this valley fast enough i want to act as a bridge and that's why i have started this health and happiness community and global holistic health initiative so who should join my community if you think you are stress if you have chronic disorder like obesity diabetes hypertension heart disease cancer mental health disease and want to reverse this disorder because if you follow holistic health principle on top of medical treatment the chance of reversing disorders are quite high if you don't have this disorder and want to keep yourself away from this disorder if you want to lose weight and reverse diabetes if anybody in your family have chronic disorder if you want to age healthy without disease and spend lack of rupees on popping pill if you increase your work efficiency and become successful in your professional life and if you want to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life then join my community okay so i will give my email in the chat box if you want to join my community come in my coaching system then we can have a talk and we can discuss so i am writing my email you can communicate by writing to me so my email is drsb sable79 at the rate of gmail.com so if you have any uh, want to join my community you can contact me on this email so we can discuss so now the session is open for question and answer and uh, your feedback thank you melvin for the feedback thank you so much the session was extremely informative thank you so much for the feedback melvin right in the chat box your suggestion your questions so this is my email you can contact me if you want to join my community and again i'd like to thank all of you for being here participating in this workshop try to follow certain principle yourself teach your child so that we all can navigate this challenging time and emerge victoriously thank you so much if there are no questions then i'm going to end this meeting any questions any suggestion so thank you so much for the feedback bye take very good care of yourself i'm ending this meeting thank you so